Hi everyone. Although not only used in the Partimento tradition, the so-called rule of the octave comprises one of its core teaching components. Probably devised as a means of codifying some of the many earlier rules governing harmonic possibilities for use over bass notes, the rule of the octave provides a set of voice-leading patterns over ascending and descending stepwise scales, which can be used as a basis for composition, improvisation, and realising figured and unfigured basses. Several earlier interpretations of the rule exist, with some versions using only the notes of the scale's tonic hexachord. This hexachord version, for example, includes a dominant chord after the submediant. And these versions include descending options between the scale's tonic and dominant degrees. By the 18th century, a standard version of the rule had developed. In the standard version, the chords are essentially the same in both major and minor keys, with tonic and dominant harmonies used predominantly along with supertonic and subdominant chords. Only on the sixth degree of the descending scales in both major and minor is chromaticism introduced, here as a secondary dominant, and here as a French augmented sixth chord. Typically, to avoid the augmented second between the 6th and 7th degrees of the harmonic minor scale, the melodic minor is the favoured scale choice. While the basic rule of the octave patterns use only a single chord, often played vertically over each of the scale's degrees, the chord's notes may also be melodically embellished. Here, for example, the bass notes of this fragment of an ascending E minor rule of the octave is prolonged by 16th notes. Rule of the octave patterns were to be learned by students in all keys using the three positions of the right hand. These positions correspond to the layout of the initial chords of the pattern. In first position, the initial chord has its doubled root note in the top part. In the second position, it has its third degree, and in the third position, its fifth degree. With each right hand position, the chord type and their inversions remain identical, but the right hand spacing and voice leading is changed. Familiarity with each right hand position in all keys meant students were capable of using the required progressions or part thereof to harmonise any stepwise bass line. Other complementary patterns, still based on the notes of a diatonic scale, were devised for use with disjunct, mostly sequential bass lines, chromatic and diatonic stepwise bass lines, and the embellishment of a scale's degrees. The embellished scale degree patterns differ from the rule of the octave in that while in the rule of the octave each scale degree supports a single chord which may itself be embellished or used as a single vertical sonority, the embellished scale degrees support two or more notes which may suggest a change of harmony on each degree or a series of recurring intervals used sequentially. In these patterns often the intervallic pattern is more important than any chords which may be present and it is typically the pattern's framing chords which define the key, while the repeating pattern in between is often tonally ambiguous. The ascending 5-6 pattern, for example, which predates the rule of the octave, and is in itself an elaboration of a 6-6 pattern, even in its most basic version includes two notes for each scale degree. The vertical sonority forming the sixth interval, however, is typically regarded as a required corrective to avoid consecutive fifths between the root position chords formed by the five figure. Chromatic stepwise bass lines also may use only a single chord over each chromatic note, embellishing the diatonic scale.
or may include more than one chord or repeating sonority over each scale degree. Of the many possible disjunct sequential bass lines, the majority can be reduced to an underlying cycle of fifths progression, which may be embellished in a number of ways, from the relatively simple, such as here, where each bass note supports a single root position triad, To the more complex, such as here, where in the beginning bars each of the repeated quarter note beats supports a single chord, the second of which is either a secondary half diminished or dominant seventh of the following chord. In this example, the resolution of the secondary half diminished seventh chord's fifth degree is always by leap up a fifth to the doubled root note of the following chord, and the resolution of the secondary dominant seventh chord's seventh degrees unusually leap down a fourth again to the following chord's doubled root note. It must be remembered that all of these patterns were designed to be used as a basis which could then be developed further or used in its simpler form. Many of the patterns, however, while useful for harmonising diatonic stepwise or sequential bass lines, for other bass lines such as those disjunct lines which don't move sequentially or are a mixture of conjunct and disjunct motion, they are less effective. To deal with this deficiency, and to determine the tonality of a chord or chords to harmonise specific bass motion, teachers of the Partimento tradition devised additional rules, such as two ascending notes a minor second apart are heard as the seventh and first degrees of a new key. Here, for example, the raised fourth degree in G major is treated as the seventh degree in D major and is harmonised by that key's first inversion dominant chord moving to its tonic. Two ascending notes a major second apart are heard as the fourth and fifth degrees in the new key. Here the A is heard as the fourth degree in E minor and is harmonised by that key's supertonic half diminished seventh chord in first inversion, moving to its dominant. Two notes descending by minor second are heard as the sixth and fifth degrees of the new often minor key. and the notes of a descending major second are heard as the second and first degrees of the new key. It should be noted that in all of these examples the designated notes are approached by leap and are part of a bass line formed by a mixture of conjunct and disjunct motion. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.